100. Wow, that's me now warmed up for Davenport Pro Shop's second indoor lockdown lesson. Now the weather's turned bad, I've decided to do this lesson, as I said, indoors. So we're live from Bonington this morning, and I'm going to give you three basics for padding well. The first basic will be aim. Can you get the ball starting where you aim it? Most important thing, get that ball on the right starting line. If you've read the putt right, then the ball will go in. If you don't get it on the right starting line, you've got to rely on you misreading the putt. If you misread it, you might get lucky and it might go in. But the three basics are, can you start the ball online? Can you read the green so that the ball will then bend towards the hole? And thirdly, also, can you get the right pace? So I'm going to teach you those three basics this morning and we're going to start with the first one now. Okay, so now we're on to, can we start the ball online in aiming? One of the modern things on golf balls, they've started to print these lines which help us line the ball up for where we want to start the putt on, on, on what line we want to start it. So when we go down to start this putt here, we can get behind the ball and put the line aiming exactly where we want. Now this drill to get the ball to start on line, normally outside if you're on a putting green, in my day used to use tees, put two tees in the ground, just, a, just wider than the width of the ball, and used to putt through that gate, as we used to call it, from about 18 inches. If we weren't very good at the start, we'd maybe start a little closer, and then move away to about 18 inches. But 18 inches is the optimum distance to do this drill. Nowadays, the modern pros, and Jamie's got one, and you've probably seen him on the putting green practicing hard. Um, he uses what they call a gate, and it, uh, it stands on the grass, and you can use those indoors if you've got one. I've had to improvise here because I don't have one. So we've improvised with some wine bottles, but you can use any kind of uh, drink you want. Um, I've used wine because part of this drill, you'll find out in a minute, they, they become very important. And maybe the quality of them also is important, and you'll understand why in a little bit. So this drill, 18 inches away from your gate, and... The ball, I'm going to get an inch ahead of the middle of the stance, so it's an inch ahead of my sternum. And I'm just going to try and roll the ball through that gate. And there it just clipped the side, as you saw. So, one of the rules I'm going to tell you of this drill in a minute, you'll see. But here we go again, trying to get it through the gate, straight through the middle that time. So I started that one on line, so it had every chance of going in. Next, boom, can I get it through the gate? No, hit the gate. Now, this is where the rules of indoor lockdown come in and they're very important. I call it the three strike and out rule, but it's not really three strike and out. It's three strikes and open your bottle and have a sip. So, the more you practice and the more times you hit the bottle, you either get a lot better or you'll just enjoy it a lot more. So that's the first drill on aim. Can you get it through the gate? If you keep hitting the bottles and you think you're having too much to drink, then just open the gate a little bit more. I hope you enjoyed that first drill. This is probably one of the most important things you can practice and you should practice it as much as you can. And as you can see, after a few weeks of not playing golf after my knee operation, I need a lot more practice. Now we're gonna move on to the second drill. Okay, tip number two, everybody. This is pace control. How do we learn how to get the right pace on a putt? Now, I'm obviously doing it indoors today, so I haven't got a massive area. We don't live in a mansion, unfortunately. So, I would normally practice this outside on the putting green. And the drill and the easiest way to learn how to get pace is not to stand and hit three putts at a hole, because all you're doing is you're repeating the same putt then. So you're not really learning about different paces. How, when you're on a golf course, the first green you come onto, you might have a two foot putt after hitting a good shot in, or you might have a 30 foot putt. So you need to judge how hard you're gonna be at hitting those putts. First thing I always do when I walk onto a green is, is judge roughly whether my putt is uphill or downhill and get a good idea of whether it's gonna be a quick or a slow putt. Inside here, doing this drill, it's obviously nice and flat, the surface, so the putt speed's gonna be the same. So here I've got four different distance points. So I would never practice to the same one twice in a row. So I'm going to go to the first one here and try and get the pace. And I'm going to look and try and use my hand-eye coordination to feel that pace to the first one. How much backswing, how much follow-through do I need? How hard do I need to hit it? 
That's obviously too hard and it's gone just past the second one. So this green is quick. So I'm gonna go try and go to the first one again. Now I've got a feel of the green and the feel of the speed. So I'm gonna hit this a lot softer. And lo and behold, we're level with the first one. So that's a good part. I felt the pace nicely there. Now I'm gonna go and try and go to the furthest one. And I got a feel, I'm gonna have a look. It's one of the ways a lot of the top pros, if you ever go and watch them do it, is they look at the hole or how far they want to hit it and they feel in their arms just by swinging them. How hard do I need to hit that to go that distance? They're using the hand-eye coordination. So I'm going to get over this part. I'm trying to go for the longest one. I've looked. I've felt it in my arms. Can I feel it when I hit the putt? There it goes. And it's just a little bit short. So I again need more practice, not enough time on the golf course at the moment. But when you get on that putting green, when you get back, or if you want to practice it in ho at home, is just do a different distance each time, giving yourself a feel, using your hand-eye coordination. On the putting green, as I said, it's a lot easier and it's a great drill before you go out. Don't practice the putts and, and miss a few putts, then you go out with a negative uh, frame of mind. Go out without using a hole and just practice your speed putting and feel those distances. If you can then get the right starting line as we did on the first tip and the right speed, you've got only other one thing to think about and that is reading the green, which is the next tip coming up now. Okay, so we're now on to tip three, reading the green. Obviously not very easy to do indoors because it's flat here. So what I propose to do is give you the basics. Then when we're back in action on the golf course, pop in and see me. I'll take you on the putting green for a couple of minutes and run you through exactly how to do it. So this is tip three, how do we read a green? Well, what I do is I go just past halfway of my length of putt and I straddle the line of my putt and I try and close my eyes and feel what way I'm sloping. It's much easier, you get optical illusions if you use your eyes, so the easiest way to do this is to close your eyes. I stand there and if I can't feel much slope, and obviously here I can't feel much slope, then on the putting green before I go out, I'll find somewhere where I can't feel any slope, and I'll use that as a straight putt for my starting point. Then I'll move slightly to the left or to the right of that, of that line I've just done, till I find that my left foot is, say, slightly higher than my right foot. And if it's only slightly higher, I know that putt's going to bend left to right because my left foot is higher, so I'm tipped this way a little bit. Um, if it's only a little bit, I just say aim for the lip. Okay, if it's a little bit more, and I, I judge that as number one, and if it's a little bit more of a slope, and you've got to practice this to find the variety of the slopes, and you're going to gauge the slopes between one and five. Five would be like this and one would just be a tiny little slope. Then when you do and you practice those putts and you gauge the number one slope, you practice those, you find out how much it breaks. You practice a number two slope, find out how much it breaks. So when you get on the course, you can just quickly go up halfway between your putt, uh, the length of your putt, and straddle the line of your putt and whatever way you're sloping, and you gauge it on that one to five scale. If it's a zero, it's straight. If it's one, you go slightly towards the lip of whatever way it's gonna slope. That's the way most of the top pros now uh, judge the uh, reading the greens, and that's how I want you to try and read greens. It's a quick, easy drill. The top pros take ages doing it, because it's obviously worth a lot of money to them. You can do it very quickly. Just once, you can soon feel it. If you don't feel anything, then you go straight, and there's nothing wrong with going straight. So that's the third and final tip. I've got a little bonus tip though for you to fit before I finish. And that's, we've not really judged, done anything on technique. And the reason for that is obviously technique's more of a one-to-one -one private lesson. Um, but I'm gonna give you a little tip here for practicing indoors on in this lockdown. Put your head against the wall so it's still. Get your putter ready and hit your putt, keeping your head still. So all you can see there is my hands and arms and shoulders are moving. Nothing else is moving. And if you can keep your head still, you've got every chance of getting that putt out the middle of the putter. If you don't get it out the middle of the putter, you'll see if it comes out the toe, the putter wobbles. It comes out the heel, the putter wobbles. Comes out the middle, no wobble at all. There's no wobble, that ball's gonna go straight. I hope you've enjoyed my indoor lockdown tips. I hope you don't hit that bottle too much. And I really look forward to welcoming everybody back to Davenport Golf Club and see you all soon.